How many times have you guys seen the videos on the YouTube that promises you some magic tricks, some overnight score improvement from 2 out of 5 to 5 out of 5 overnight? Can you imagine? Dekh raha hai Binod, how he is making fun of us. Gajab hai. <laughs> All those false promises, but I thought to make one simple strategy video for you. One final, the core strategy. Hey everyone, this is Anurag here from Edutrain XPT. I hope you all are doing good. And this is the basic focus of my video today. There are a lot of strategies, a lot of techniques, shortcuts, tricks circulating on the YouTube right now. But what is essential is only one apex, the topmost strategy or the core technique you can call it. Follow this and everything will become so simple because it all stands out from the root. Everything grows from the root. If you attack directly at the root, you will understand what I'm trying to say. So without wasting any time, hit the subscribe button and keep watching this video right till the end. Okay, because this is the concept that will help you to solve reading fill in the blanks like you are applying butter on the toast. It will become very simple because until now what you have been doing, you have been running away from the core technique. You have been running towards the tricks overnight techniques, magic tricks, all those things you were looking for and that's why you were not focusing on the technique. So I bring to you the technique, the only one concept that will help you to solve the problem. Let's have a look at one of the students who is doing so well now with the exam questions. Okay, so in the first subject, which one is the subject, verb and object? Skin is the subject, exposed is the verb and sun is the object. Which type of verb is closely associated with verbs? It's adverb. Okay, so how many adverbs, adverbs do you see in the options? I can see it's only one, which is directly. That's the correct answer. Which type of word is bones? It's noun. And which type of word describes a noun? Adjective. How many adjectives do you see in the answer options? Uh, it's only one which is strong. That's correct. Which word collocates with daily? It's dose. Daily dose. Yes, daily dose. Daily is also adverb and this one is a verb. So adverbs are close to verb. Good one. And last one. Time it dash for your skin. It is the subject here. So what do we expect here? Verb. Okay, and it is singular subject. So which type of word will come? Singular or plural? Plural. Okay, now only two options. Takes and consumes. Which one will you choose? Time it takes is a collocation. Absolutely so correct. Text. Okay, so you just saw how we were able to build the concepts. Allow the concepts to grow. I will also show you some real chat scripts from our successful students who have been doing well in their PT exam, especially in the reading module. Have a look at the scorecard of this student who jumped from 69 and then he jumped to 83 in the very next attempt. Another student also managed to go from 77 to 85 in one attempt with us. So what was happening before coming to us, they were also trying not to build the concepts, but rely on the tricks, the patterns, whatever people say to you on the YouTube. But when they started focusing on the core thing, allowed the concepts to grow inside them. And that's when they saw the magic happen. So forget about the magic tricks, forget about the overnight tricks. Okay, focus on only one concept. Okay, so the one and only concept that I was trying to tell you is the concept of how the English language is written. Only two ways you write sentences in English is the active voice and the passive voice. Now look at how the sentence is structured. Okay, active voice, the subject come first, verb in the middle and object in the end. Whereas in the passive voice, which is more of scientific writing or formal way of writing, the object comes first, verb in the middle and subject in the end. Subject is someone who is doing an action. Like I am playing with the football. So I am doing some action. So I become the subject. And what am I doing? I'm playing. So that becomes the verb. The main thing of the subject, whatever the subject is doing. 
and what am i doing the action with a football so that becomes your object now we will be able to identify so many patterns just by identifying subject verb and object and also you need to learn about the subject and verb agreement okay because verbs are a little bit dangerous because they change according to the subject they have to agree with the subject is it singular or plural subject and they also change to show the time past present and future so that's why you need to be a little careful with the verb but let's try to identify these things in a sentence and you will see that the grammar patterns will slowly be visible to you straight away okay so let's look at the examples of the both the type of sentences that i just told you active and passive voice how is active voice written is like this egypt elects its new president okay egypt is doing an action subjects are always noun or pronoun one grammar concept okay so this one is noun and that is your subject because egypt is doing some action what is the action is it doing it's electing the president so that becomes your verb and the object is the president now you see over here new what is new new is describing the object and object is also noun or pronoun all the time never changes subject is always noun or pronoun object is always noun or pronoun so these two will remain nouns or pronouns okay and what describes the noun which is coming right before this object is describing the noun so this will be the adjective there now you see so many grammar patterns already here after nouns you are seeing the verbs before nouns you are seeing the verbs as well as the adjectives so these are the grammar patterns that the people have been telling you on the youtube including me but i am showing you how it actually works when you actually write in the passive voice things change slightly object comes first so the new president which was right in the end comes in the beginning and then over here the verb will always be in verb 3 so this elected is always in verb 3 that's a common pattern and then most of the time it will have by because you need to show the subject there who has done this actions the experiment was conducted by the scientists again conducted past tense by and then the subject is coming right in the end so this is the way you write the sentences in english language only active or passive voice now comes the turn of identifying the grammar patterns within the active and the passive voices very easy believe me these are all the common grammar patterns that i have shared to you till now isn't it and i'll show you just by looking at these sentences you will be able to identify now and you saw in that video how easily my student was able to recognize it and see how efficiently she was able to solve the questions the exam questions adjectives come before the noun because they describe the noun adverb describes the verb so they come close to the verb now before the verb is not always a pattern it can sometimes come after the verb i am speaking slowly so that adverb slowly is coming after the verb as well or i am slowly speaking so you can say it in multiple ways so verb will be accompanied closely with the adverbs adverbs sometimes also describe the adjectives so if i say he is an intelligent man but if i say he is a highly intelligent man so highly over here is the adverb as you all know by now anything ending with ly is adverb and then they can also describe adjectives in this case it was describing intelligent now soon i'll be showing you the examples and we'll also be doing the exam questions you will see how easy it becomes the same concepts we teach in the class as well to our live students and build those concepts make those students do it repeatedly in the class as well as outside the class through daily practice and the portal that we provide so that's how we see a lot of improvement in the students if you are really struggling in reading and if you are not finding any way you need to just enroll with us whatsapp us and we will help you to enroll in the classes and your new life will and your new journey will begin the remaining two patterns noun and verb you already saw subject verb same thing you need to be little careful about this subject verb agreement it also helps you a lot in your writing so when you are writing many a times you use a plural verb with a plural subject it has to be the opposite okay 
the universities offer the college offers so that's how the opposite verb comes and that's how they agree with the subject the next one is verb and noun again subject verb object same of the patterns what i tell you verb will come before the object which is noun so the same pattern i am telling you here verb is coming before noun isn't it obvious if you know what active voice is what passive voice is and it will become so simple when you are able to identify the subject verb and object you will see all these patterns clearly believe me just follow the techniques keep following it repeatedly using these techniques solve the questions in the exam slowly the concepts will build in your mind and then you will start seeing it i just showed you that girl's feedback look at one of the line which is very important what she says she says is be positive and allow your mind to build patterns of english language this is the patterns that she was talking about once you start identifying those patterns things will become more apparent more clear to you okay so as i told you already subject and object is always noun or pronoun verb will be the main action done by the subject now sometimes there can be multiple verbs in the same sentence you still need to connect the subject with the verb and the object and remember one important rule if i just read the subject verb and object it should make sense to you so if i say the researchers fed the chicken with the food items so if i choose researchers as the subject fed as the verb and instead of chicken if i say food items as the object which is also a noun then it's not making sense researcher fed food items no researchers fed the chicken right so just extracting those words from the sentence will still make sense to you that is the magic of the subject verb object identification always choose the main verb which is being done by the subject there could be multiple sentences multiple verbs that are given to you for example if the sentence is saying the scientist who lives on the bridge road works in a company now which one will be the main verb lives or works so over here our focus is the scientist working in a certain company not living on some street that's just an additional information about the subject so that's how you should still keep the focus on identifying the main verb little bit tricky but with practice it will become perfect let's look at more examples before we dive into the exam questions i know that is your favorite part how we apply the skills to actually solve the exam questions things will become very very clear to you egypt elects its new president we already saw this example before now if i already pointed out that new is describing the object object is always a noun so something that describes a noun is an adjective and this pattern has been shown so many times in the pt exam always whenever i get a new prediction file we prepare the prediction file we see the questions go through the patterns we see this pattern at least repeating more than 70% of the overall blanks okay every sentence will have this pattern any random sentence you pick up from the internet will have it okay that is the way of writing right if you are describing someone you will put an adjective before them right so that's how we write it that's how we read it that is the way of english now let's see this example tom is an intelligent man tom is an intelligent man now one more thing elects is a verb now i told you that with elects i can put an adverb closely to it so maybe i decide to choose or put egypt elects its new president slowly or egypt slowly elects its new president so you see the adverb can be added here as well as over here still pointing to the same verb okay so you just need to find which verb is it associated with or is it associated with any adjective okay so but you will see these patterns just keep identifying them the second sentence says is an intelligent man again see the same pattern adjective is describing the noun so that's why it is coming before the noun right or instead of new in the first sentence i say elects its new female president so again new president female president both are describing the presidents and still will remain the adjective okay so sometimes you may choose to describe more than one thing for a particular object or a subject basically noun so 
you can have multiple adjectives before that as well. Third example, Tom is a highly intelligent man. I gave you this example just before in the previous slide. Highly is an adverb ending with ly. Now you can identify this. Now, but intelligent is adjective which is describing the noun. And this guy adverb over here is describing the adjective. You see the connections here. These are the grammar patterns you will start identifying. Okay. Now over here, adverb is describing the adjective. In the first sentence, if I say Egypt slowly elects its new president. So slowly over there was describing the verb. Okay. So this is the pattern. Slowly when you start practicing, start looking in the sentences, identify the grammar patterns, things will become a lot simpler to you. On the other way around, when we use it in the object, verb and subject, which is the passive voice, what happens is the subject comes in the end, object in the middle. And remember to have verb three always here. Okay. Is elected, was elected, will be elected, always verb three will come here. Whether you are talking about past, present or future tenses, always accompanied by verb three. That's a common pattern. So all you need to do is identify which type of voice it has been written in and then start applying the grammar concepts. You will start to see them. Okay, now let's do some exam questions before we run out of time. And let's see if we can find some of those patterns or some of the knowledge that we have just acquired. Okay, it's a big text. Don't be scared in the exam when you see a big text. You still need to read it. Look closely for reading fill in the blanks. You can look closely to the blank because that's where you need to solve. But if it is not working out, if the grammar is not working out, you still need to read them. That's why I ask you to do a lot of reading to become a fast reader. So because if it is a big passage, you need to read and understand and comprehend a lot of things. So you need to be a fast reader. So most of the time grammar will help you. The context will help you. But if you need to apply wider meaning and you still need to read the remaining sentences, sometimes those will provide the clues to you. OK, let's start finding. You can pause the video and you can try to solve this question on your own. If not, then we'll discuss it in the next slide. OK, let's do the first question. I will show you the answers very shortly. But what I want you to do, you can attempt it yourself. Just pause the video, OK, because otherwise if I keep too much gap, the video will become unnecessarily longer. You will get bored. So let's jump on, hoping that you have tried to solve it. And then we'll discuss the answers now. So what is the first one? I hope every one of you got the exceptionally high. High over here, this type of pollution is high in coastal regions. So what is high? High over here is describing high, higher, highest. These are adjective words. Now why an adverb is coming before an adjective? Didn't we talk about it that adverbs can also describe the adjective. So that is the pattern we applied here. Exceptionally high. If you talk about collocations, we also use it normally in English language, significantly higher, exceptionally higher. Okay. So these are the kind of language that we use and that's where the collocations come out from. Next one. It is talking about the widespread use of artificial light in modern societies, mean that light pollution is an increasingly common feature of the environment's human inhabitat inhabit. This type of pollution is exceptionally high in coastal regions of tropic and temperate zones as these are the areas higher rates and blah blah blah. And then we reach the next sentence. Light pollution is a threat for many species that inhabit these locations, particularly those whose ecology or behavior depends dash on natural cycles. Okay. Now in this one, it's kind of a phrase. So we check depends dash on. Now there are a couple of them that are given to you. So we chose one of the answer which is this one and the phrases are here by the way in some way to move away what will come depends in some way on natural cycles of light and dark. So it is showing some kind of dependency. You can't use depends by the way depends to move away. It's not making sense. So this time one blank grammar helped us the other blank your common sense will help you okay so always remember to apply some 
detective thinking or your verbal reasoning thinkings. So always you need to think. Definitely for reading questions, you need to think. Okay. Challenge yourself. Every time you see a question, challenge. Does it sound proper? Does it sound natural to me or not? If it does, if it is something that you use on a regular basis, that knowledge will also help you. Okay. The third one. Dash mostly on light cues. So mostly, do you see which type of word this is? This is an adverb. So with adverb, most of the time it will be accompanied with verb and the remaining time by adjectives. So we need an, a verb or an adjective here. So let's start looking for that. Interfere is a verb depending. Yes, these are already eliminated. This one we already chose as the second answer. Disturb, yes, relying, yes, specifically, no. Okay, so specifically and exceptionally were put for the first blank. So we already chose exceptionally, so specifically can be eliminated. Now, which one will you choose? Read the sentence, understand the meaning. Okay, that is also very, very important. Under natural conditions, turtles hatch predominantly at night. Although some early morning and the afternoon emerg emergences occur, and show an innate and well-directed orientation of the water. Innate means inbuilt. Dash mostly on light cues that attract them towards the brighter horizon above the sea surface. Dash mostly on the light cues. So it is talking about the small babies that are coming out of the turtle eggs. What are they dependent on? What are they relying on? So you can choose either depending mostly or relying mostly. But again, you have to apply the proper meaning here. Is it talking about reliance or is it talking about dependence? If I rely on something that is not the same, exactly the same as depending. Depending means that is completely you are depending on. But relying is you are using the hints to rely on that path. So that's what these turtles are doing. Early morning, they are using the light cues. Light cues means the sunlight or the light coming from the ocean, whatever it is. They are using that light to attract them to the brighter horizon above the sea surface. So they are relying on it. Okay, that's why relying is the most one. It was a dist <laughs> it was a confusing one, I agree. But in the end, we chose what made the best sense. So relying will be your third answer. And the next one. Artificial lighting on beaches is strongly attractive to hatching and can cause them dash the sea and dash with their ability to orient. Cause them dash the sea. Okay, cause them interfere the sea we can't use. By the way, sea we can't use. In some way we can't use to move away. It's making little bit sense to move away from the sea. To move away from the sea. I think one word was missing here. Okay, from is already there. So it's not missing from the sea is mentioned in the question to move away from the sea. So that is making sense. Disturb, cause them disturb the sea. Cause them, if you want to use disturb, cause them to disturb the sea. So there was a preposition missing. So you can't use disturb. And that's how we can choose this as the fourth answer. And also read it after that. After once you select the answer, read it. Cause them to move away from the sea. Okay, yes, it is making appropriately sense. And interfere with their ability to orient in a constant direction. Interfere with their ability. So that is one of the options that is left. The remaining disturb with their ability. Disturb with their ability is not used. Okay, disturb something is directly interfere with is a collocation. If you haven't been aware of this particular collocation, you can note it down. Okay, and interfere with is definitely collocation here. And you can still apply the other grammar concepts as well. I have been a little bit quicker in solving this question because otherwise it will take more time to explain. But still, I can show you in many other questions that same techniques and I have been making videos how to understand those patterns and identify those. Now, this is a smaller passage, so I can show it to you clearly. Okay, and the enforcement, you can again pause the video and try to solve the question, but I'll keep going, okay? Digital media and the internet have made the sharing of texts 
music and images easier than ever and the enforcement of copyright dash harder. Harder. What is it? Hard, harder, hardest. Adjectives, right? Enforcement of copyright. So which of the words do you think will come here? Enforcement of copyright dash harder. So what are we talking about? Because the sharing of images, texts and things have been become so easy. That's why copyright enforcement is becoming harder. So we are trying to restrict something over here and using that meaning, we can use the restriction and restriction is a noun. So you can see that adjectives and noun most of the time 99% time adjectives will come before noun but sometimes the pattern can also change you can add something after that after the noun as well like the plan like the pen is blue in color so blue is still an adjective describing the pen but this time it is coming after the noun so you still need to be careful i knew this is an adjective so i know some kind of noun is going to come somewhere or with a adjective of course noun only can come so i am looking for a noun how many nouns are there movements is a noun enforcement is a noun restriction is a noun purpose could be a noun creativity yes it is a noun so then you start applying those nouns creativity harder no challenges harder copyright challenges harder movements harder not making sense restriction is the only making sense enforcement we can't use it because it will be redundancy you're using the same words again and again and that's not how we write it enforcement of copyright enforcement harder ah, not sounding correct at all you don't say good is something good that is done in a good way by doing good things so you don't repeat the same thing again and again so that's why redundancy is this is what is called redundant use of words Okay, enforcement of copyright restriction. We found the first answer. The next one, the situation has encouraged the growth of IP law, intellectual property laws, even if you don't know IP laws, and prompted increased industrial concentration on dash and policing. On something and policing. And dash and dash. Now, this type of word is written in ing. Okay, in a verb form, policing, but it's used as a noun here, policing something. Okay, what else is available for you in the option that is also in the same form? When we are using this, this, and this, all of them mostly are in the same form. So we need some noun form. Extending is very similar. Movements, it's plural. Creativity, enforcement, blah, blah, blah. So which one do you think? Okay, as I told you, there was a hint given to you, policing, and that's how you can choose the second answer as extending. Increased industrial concentration on extending and policing. Okay, policing IP protection, which also, while also leading to the growth of open access or creative commons. See how adjectives and nouns are used together, creative commons. Again, same patterns. Movement which dash such control of knowledge and dash. Now two blanks are really close. So this sentence may become a little bit complex for you to solve, but still stick to the basics. Which movement is a noun which is causing something. Which dash such control of knowledge and dash. Okay, so noun. Now this part of the sentence, I don't see any verbs here. I need some kind of action. Movement which is doing something. Some action is happening here definitely. After noun, we know the pattern. Verbs are expected here. Prompted. Movement which prompted such control of knowledge. Okay. But the sentence is talking in the present tense. Why should we use a past tense? That is also important. Movements is a noun. Creativity again noun. Honest again noun. Purpose. Which purpose such control? No. With challenges, with challenges, read the sentence again. IP protection, which while also leading to the growth of open access or creative commons, mo common movement, which challenges such control. Because of these problems, it is challenging. And that's what this movement challenges such control of knowledge. And now again, 
knowledge is a noun and because you are using and we use another noun here similar grammar pattern now which noun is making sense with knowledge prompted is not a knowledge movements will not make sense here with knowledge creativity will make sense enforcement will not make sense so that's how i choose this one okay applying little bit of grammar knowledge okay noun and noun in two places same thing wherever and is used or or is used you have to use the same kind of word that is also a grammar pattern i chose them and applied little bit of meaning and i was able to solve the question okay so we got all of them correct restriction extending challenges and creativity last one the time to do the last question let's do it quickly as well you can pause it again e learning is a new way forward we believe dash in e learning we is the subject believe is the verb we believe dash in e learning okay okay so what what is going to be here subject is you, you already know that it's a noun or pronoun verb is already a verb now which type of word come closely to the verbs adverbs right that's what we learned about and now you see same pattern is applicable in the exam question these are all exam questions you can check the prediction file yourself it is randomly picked up from there so what is the adverb given here only one option straight away go for it blindly and then put it and see if it is fitting still fitting the meaning or not only one word will fit the meaning sometimes there could be more options in this case you're lucky only one option e-learning is a new way forward we believe passionately in e-learning perfectly making sense okay our innovative approaches opens approach opens up new dash for busy professionals okay our innovative approach this is the subject opens is the verb opens up new is kind of adjective here so what do we need here object we need a noun here so what do we need is a noun how many nouns do we see here interaction life existence opportunities occasion lot of nouns here okay now we need to apply the meaning this one chance is not a noun here okay interaction is existence is opportunities is occasion is our innovative approaches opens up new dash for busy professionals that simply did not previously exist new what new possibilities new opportunities so with whenever you see this kind of word new you have to use a plural word new possibilities new scopes okay so this one is making perfect sense here okay sometimes singular can also go along with new i'm not enforcing that rule on you but you have to see the meaning opens up new opportunities yes making sense new possibilities yes making sense so those are the type of words you should go for okay two done three more to go did not previously exist the dash to combine that simply did not previously exist the dash to combine a prestigious master's program with a demanding professional and personal dash sometimes you can also use the collocation straight away something that will collocate with two very common preposition focus on okay do something to okay so need to see which kind of word will collocate interaction to interaction with life to not making sense existence to no chance to yes chance is making sense occasion to again not making sense okay occasion for something okay so chance exist did not previously exist the chance to combine yes it is making sense as well so grammar wise collocation wise everywhere this word was applicable fits the most in the best possible manner demanding professional and personal dash so demanding professional you see adjective and noun used together again personal is an adjective we need a noun here now which type of noun are you going to use professional life is a noun lot of nouns right interaction life existence occasion which one will you choose personal interaction personal life yes we do talk about personal life looks like a possibility personal existence not making sense meaningfully here personal occasion nah personal occasion we don't never use it like that so life is making more sense here that's what we'll go with and the last one 
our small virtual classrooms facilitate intensive dash and collaboration. See, our small virtual classrooms. This is the subject. Facilitate is the verb. Intensive is the adjective. And we are expecting an object here. Classrooms facilitate intensive something. And now, as soon as you get something, I have to put something that will be a noun. Now, which noun is making sense here? Look at the sentence, evaluate what is it talking about. Our small virtual classroom facilitate intensive dash. It's talking about classes, learning. Okay, all those sort of things should come to your mind. Dash and collaboration. Interaction and collaboration making perfect sense together. Interaction and collaboration among professionals all over the world. So I will go with this one. None other the words that are given to you, existence and occasion are not at all fitting this particular part, dash and collaboration. So only interaction is making sense and that's how you see all the answers that we chose using the grammar, using the context, using the concepts that I just showed you. It works on the real exam. So start following them and if you are still struggling with the reading, writing, fill in the blanks, then I have also made a very good video on showing you the fastest strategy of reading, writing, fill in the blanks. Do go out and watch that particular video. It is going to open your mind. Okay, and at any point of time, if you are still having trouble, not able to get your scores, no matter what happens, enroll with us and we'll personally guide you. Till then, keep watching EduTrainX with a thumbs up and a subscribe. And then I'll soon be back with another video, an interesting one on new PT topics that will help you to score better in the exam. See you soon.